Hey guys, it's Jay from Skull Gaming Network. Welcome to an out of the park mobile 2018 fantasy draft and rebuild video. This was originally going to be live streamed on June 2nd, but my live stream setup was not working. So instead, I am making this in a video. How it's going to work. So the twins are my base team, my base roster, but we're doing a fantasy draft. So the players will come from other teams. When I made an original post asking which team I should rebuild, there were six comments for six different teams. So I have to take at least one player from each of those teams at some point in the draft. The other players I can pick as I choose. The first season is going to kind of be a year zero because it would be last season. If I get any phenomenal trade offers, I might take them. But otherwise, the team's just going to get one year under the belt. After that, we'll hit the offseason before 2019, and that's when things will really kick into gear. Then we'll have the 2019 season, and we'll go beyond. I don't know exactly how long, because this is the intro. I'm aiming for somewhere between five and eight seasons, hoping to win a World Series, or at least get sustained success for this franchise. But here we go. We're entering the draft. We have the 26th pick. It's Serpentine. So on odd number rounds, we have pick 26. On even number rounds, we'll have pick 5. And for the first pick in this draft, what I'm thinking I'm going to go with is Willie Calhoun. Because Bad Robot 651 commented the Texas Rangers. Willie Calhoun is from the Texas Rangers. So I will pick him up. And we have our first team down. We'll now auto-draft until our next pick. For our second pick, there are some good players out here. I'm not going with pitching right away because pitching seems to be common and it seems to hang around longer. So who do we have? We have Kyle Schwarber, 25 years old. Four-star value and could increase. What is his player profile like? So below average contact, but elite power, that might be nice. Let's see who else is out there. There's Domingo Santana, age 25. How does he compare? Better contact, worse power. So Santana, to me, seems worth it more than Schwarber. We'll make sure there's no one else. I'd rather get Santana than Puig. Walker Bueller is tempting. Although he has a full season to develop. Jacob DeGrom's available in round two. So again, pitching is going to stay on the board. I'm going with Domingo Santana from the Mariners. Not one of the teams that was commented, but that's okay. Because to some extent, you have to get the best players available. Auto draft to round three. And who is out there? There is Dallin Batansis. There's Blake Snell from the Rays. Now, nobody commented Blake Snell, but that would be a tempting pickup. Oh, geez, I was on page 12 or 13? I've been missing the best players. That's a huge mistake. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Anyways, still out there is the Clue Bot. There's Chad Green, Tommy Conley, Brian Dozier. We want to try to get some young guys who also have at least partially developed, or at least that's what I'm looking for. Max Scherzer is still available. There's some great starters. Eloy Jimenez would be a good young prospect, but I feel like we can get prospects later. You know what? I know starters will be available later. But let's lock down a 31-year-old ace by the name of Corey Kluber. Nobody commented the Cleveland Indians, but that's okay. We're now on to round four. Joey Vado's going to sit there. He's expensive. He's old. All right, now one of the people that commented is the Schimpf place. He said anything but the Yankees and Dodgers. We could take Glaber Torres, who is a Yankee. But you know what we're going to do? For him, I said his team's going to be the Padres. We'll take Fernando Tatis Jr., the shortstop prospect from the Padres. Hopefully, Shimp, if you watch this, that makes you happy. We're on to round number five now, and let's see who's available. And you know what? Another super prospect just popped up. Matthew LeCair said, I should use the Jays. 
Let's take the Jays prospect, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and pair him up with Fernando Tatis Jr. Is it a good move? I don't know. But I saw it, and I liked it, so I went with it. Then I think in round six, we're going to go with Jonathan Scope. He grades out pretty well. He's 26, so he can still develop a little bit. He is a current twin. We'll just get him a year early. Then Devin Reed says, honestly, as a Yankees fan, he would like to see a Cardinal on the team. We'll go with Yadier Molina. He's a bit old but we get a good, solid catcher to help our pitching staff. And in round eight, I don't like to do this because of the off-the-field history, but Roberto Osuna is a 23-year-old closer who's already elite and has the potential to improve. Now, I don't condone anything he did in real life, but he's staring me in the face as a player that I should pick. So then we've got a solid closer. We've got a solid starter. We've got some prospect bats. And we've got Yadier Molina. Then we're going to add another bullpen weapon. Lee Cohen commented, Roses are red, violets are blue. You like fried chicken. And the Yankees do too. Which to me means he wants a Yankee. So we're going to get Chad Green. Hopefully one of the less toxic Yankee choices out there. And now we're on round 10. I'm going to start going position by position and try to fill out this roster. We're going to start off looking for a right fielder. And, oh man, another super prospect from the Washington Nationals. Hard to pass up on Juan Soto. Now this team might not be good year one. We're just trying to stack up the talent. And there is yet another great young prospect, Austin Meadows. He's been tearing it up this year. Then in left field, we'll get our last team need out of the way. We're asked to take a Tiger. We'll take Christian Stewart. So now every team that was commented has had at least one player added. We'll take a look at... Best players available. Then we'll get a catcher of the future in Will Smith, who hit his first ever home run, a walk-off home run, on Saturday night. Congrats, Will. You've made the team because of that. Short will take more risks. It's going to be a young team. We're going to get Adalberto Mondesi suspended for the first half of last year and accordingly in this game but a ton of potential, and we've seen him develop a little bit already. At first base, we'll get Chris Davis. Hopefully he doesn't go 0 for 54 for us, but if he does, we'll forgive him. At third base, we'll pick up Logan Forsyth as a stopgap to allow Vladdy Jr. to develop. And these last few rounds, we need starting pitching. We need a few relievers, so I am going to scour the depths of things and see who looks good. I'll take Miles Michaelis as a number two starter. Not a ton of upside, but honestly, I pretty much messed up not taking more pitching. So I'm going to try to just get some decent arms in the next couple of rounds, and then I'll sim the rest of the draft and see what the AI picks up on my behalf. And I'll take Julio Tehran, and then I'll let the AI draft the last six players for me. And if we look at our roster, we've got Kluber, Michaelis, and Tehran. Then we've got Marco Gonzalez, Adalberto Mejia, Austin Pruitt, and Dan Straley for depth, along with Trent Thornton. Our bullpen, rather sparse, Adam Bray. And then we added Michael Feliz, who looks pretty good, to Chad Green and Roberto Osuna. I went a bit heavy on the bats, admittedly. We got Yachty, Will Smith, Chris Davis, Willie Calhoun, Scope, Forsyth, Vladdy Jr., Eduardo Escobar, Adalberto Mondesi, Christian Stewart, Preston Tucker, Austin Meadows, and Domingo Santana. Now we're going to have the computer set an optimal lineup. We're going to go through the season. If anything important happens, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we'll cut to the offseason. All right, and we're at the MLB draft. We have the fourth overall pick. So I will show this because it's going to be an important one. 
And it looks like our prime choices are Carlos Pacheco, a catcher, or Alfredo Cruz, a starting pitcher. We have Will Smith, who could hopefully be our catcher of the future. We're a bit light on starting pitching. We're going to go with Alfredo Cruz. Then in the second round, Jason Hunter, now he's a closer, but he looks monstrously better than anybody else. I'm going to choose him. At this point, I don't think it matters. We'll let the AI choose the rest of the draft. And Roberto Osuna made the all-star team, as did Yadier Molina, despite a pretty bad year zero for us. And Logan Forsyth, who's our third baseman, and is just jamming things up for Vladdy Jr. eventually. We can trade, and I'm going to trade him, I think, for Nathan Eovaldi. Now, Erasmo Ramirez, not bad. His ERA is over 5. Eovaldi has an ERA under 3. Let's take Eovaldi. And we finished the year 71-91 and 91 in 4th place. Azuna had a 2.34 ERA, 32 saves, and 108 strikeouts in 80 and 2 thirds innings. Eovaldi went ice cold with us, an ERA of almost 7. Yikes. Kluber was a very solid 13 and 8, 3.69 ERA, just under 200 strikeouts. Given the sim engine that I've heard in this game skews slightly towards hitters, those are pretty solid stats. Miles Michaelis went 8 and 15 with an ERA over 5. I might have to move on from him. Julio Tehran went 10 and 16 with an ERA over 6. So he might be on his way out too. Both Michael Feliz and Chad Green pitched great for me. Yachty hit 285. Not bad. Willie Calhoun, 31 homers, 97 RBIs, 303. That was a great year for him. Vlad Jr. in a parcel year hit just under 250, 10 homers, 38 RBIs. For a 19 year old, that's a great year. Austin Meadows hit 243, 19 homers, 56 RBIs. I think having him start instead of be a prospect hurt his stock a bit. But that's okay. And Domingo Santana, last player I'm going to feature, 217, yikes. But 21 homers, 60 RBIs. We'll see how some of these guys do next year. Our budget for the upcoming year is $110 million. Not sure how much that means we can actually spend. But hopefully we have some fun with whatever we can spend. And in arbitration, what are we paying out? $8 million to Santana, $11 million to Scout, $10 million to Ozuna, under $1 million to Straley, $5.5 million to Michael Feliz. And our free agents, Corey Kluber, Chris Davis, Eduardo Escobar, and Julio Tehran. Losing Kluber would be tough. The rest of these guys I would like back but wouldn't miss necessarily. And for our budget, we have $44 million we can spend in free agency. We're going to offer Clayton Kershaw a five-year deal, $22 million per year. I would like to get him. If we give up a draft pick to get him, so be it. Then Anthony Rizzo is available. Consistent 30 and 100 guy. Average is dropping, a little bit concerning. We'll offer him a five-year $75 million deal at 15 per year. Then Patrick Corbin, who's been a serviceable starter, will give three years, $19.5 million, and see what he thinks. So there's our first batch of offers. We're going to see what these guys think. So Kershaw, he's saying if he gets a better deal, he might have to jump at it. I feel like we're not going to get him. Patrick Corbin. So far, our offer is the best, and he could see himself on the Twins. Anthony Rizzo likes my offer, but is not breaking negotiations off yet. So I'm feeling good about Corbin, not the other ones. So the Tigers are outbidding me for Kershaw. Corbin is signed, and Rizzo's leaning towards Texas. So Kershaw, we're going to go the $23 million a year he first wanted for five years. That ups from one thirteen five to one fifteen. we We'll submit that. Then we'll throw a six-year deal at Rizzo. We can only offer him $15 million a year, so we're in a bit of a pinch. We'll submit that offer and see if he bites at the extra year. So Rizzo wants more money. 
and Kershaw were now in the lead for. I'm going to going to keep focusing on Kershaw. I'm going to kind of give up on Anthony Rizzo, to be honest. And instead, I'm going to go for another starter. I'm going to throw a three-year, $34.5 million offer at Hyun Jin Ryu. Now we'll throw a three-year, $24 million deal at Tyler Chatwood. If I can get two starters in Ryu and Chatwood, that could make up for Kluber. Not perfectly, but it would be okay. So the fans are mad we lost Kluber. We got a first-round draft pick from the Cubs and a pick in the supplemental round for losing Kluber. And we got Hyun Jin Ryu. We have to give up a second-round pick, but that's okay. And we give up a third-round pick in getting Tyler Chatwood. So we got two starters. And Rizzo's trying to get money out of us. I'm offering him the max that I can. I'll throw a six to the year. If I get him, great. If not, there's nothing else I can do at this point. And we give up our fourth round pick to get Rizzo, but we kept our first. So as we get into opening day, here's our roster. Our starters, Tyler Chatwood, Patrick Corbin, Nathan Eovaldi. I'm guessing Michaelis is one of them, and maybe Ryu. Now, the other starters will file into the bullpen, but not an elite rotation, but very solid one through five. Then we've got Feliz, Green, Azuna on the back end of the bullpen. At catcher, we've got Yadi Molina and Maybreeze Viloria. Will Smith in the minors, apparently. We've got Rizzo at first. Calhoun and Scout both at second. Guerrero at third. Mondesi and Tatis Jr. at short. Meadows in center. And Santana and Soto in right. And no left fielder. So our outfield depth is a bit weak. This is our first real year. We're going to go through it, and we're probably going to try to trade for some outfielders. But we'll go through week one. Ryu got hurt. That's not good. We went one and one in our first couple days, which puts us in fifth place. No big deal. One and two. We're four and four early. And our owner passed away, so we have a new owner now. Meanwhile, we're in fifth place, 10 games below 500. Yadi wants out. He's served us well. He's not playing much, and if I can get anything for him, I will. I don't know if I'll get an offer. I do. I get two. Mark Reynolds or Matt Adams. I'll take Matt Adams. And we're on to the draft. Let's look at the draft order. We have the fourth pick after a bad year, and we have the 26th pick. Now, we don't have our mid-rounders, but those first-round picks are where we get the real prospects. And we need outfield depth. We're going to pick up Jose Morales. I know he's definitely a top prospect. Then at 26, we'll pick up Martin Maureen. We still need some bullpen help. And then we have a third pick, this one in the supplemental rounds. And there's only one player with big potential, Julio Aguilar. We don't really need a closer, but we'll do it. And then all the way to the fifth round... We'll just auto-complete it, let the AI pick our last player. And we can trade Corbin literally for Chris Davis. I'll do it to make him happy. And Ryu wants out as well. Shop him around. Nothing. And both Anthony Rizzo and Austin Meadows make the all-star teams despite our terrible year. And we can trade Miles Michaelis for a young Cal Freeland. Why not? Michaelis has been so bad. Freeland couldn't possibly be worse. And Michael Feliz got a career-ending injury. We're 30 games below 500. Every player we have wants out. This is not going well. I might have drafted a bad team. Might have drafted a bad team. <laughs> the season was so bad I got a negative score. I've never seen a negative score the worst I've gotten is like a 40, and now it's negative 202. Same $110 million payroll. In arbitration, Domingo Santana, 8 mil. Ozuna, 10 million. Chad Green, under 1 million. Kyle Freeland got 3 million. Mejia gets 1.2. Jose Ozuna gets a million. Preston Tucker, 800,000. Austin Pruitt, 3.4 million. Straley, 3.4 million. So Chris Davis is gone. 
Jonathan Skilt might be leaving us. I'll have to take a look at him. 253, okay. So he had 39 homers and then 26. I might need to bring back Skilt. They're going to trade Hyun Jin Ryu for Austin Jackson. Shut a little bit of salary and pick up some sorely needed outfield depth. Then we have an offer. We can trade Jose Ozuna and a young pitching prospect. Not fond of trading the pitcher, but I'll do it to get a solid catcher in Pedro Severino. And here's our roster to start year two. We brought back Scope as a free agent, and that was it. Otherwise, there's the team. Let's see what it can do. We're 1-15, in 2-20. We'll trade Tyler Chatwood for you, Darvish, because Chatwood wants out. And we have the number one pick in the draft, plus we're the worst team. We desperately need pitching for going with Lambert. And to start round two, we'll pick up a reliever for the potential Pick up a second one. We really need bullpen help. Then we'll send the rest of the draft. And Matt Adams wants to be traded. We'll trade him for Lorenzo Cain. Then we put Adalberto Mondesi on the market. There's some crazy good offers for him. We have Tatis Jr., so we don't need two short stops. And to me, it comes down to John Gray or Taylor Trammell. And Trammell, a young center fielder. We do have Austin Meadows, but we still are struggling with outfield depth. I'm going to take the outfielder. And we got a massive trade. We can get Andrew Benintendi and Mark Zepchinski for Willie Calhoun. Now, Calhoun is kind of important for us, but we have Jonathan Scope at second. If we can get Benintendi in return and really, really shore up that outfield, we're going to complete that trade. Now we're going to trade Zepchinski for Luke Bard. Bard has team control, so we're building towards the future and maximizing the trades we've gotten. We finished the year 64-98. and 98. An improvement on the year before, but this seems disappointing. We'll try one or two more years and see if I can fix things. Otherwise, I might just not be good at the fantasy draft. And in arbitration, we're giving out a ton of money, which is fine. But these guys need to perform, and or I need to trade some of them. Benintendi worth 15 mil. As soon as the one free agent I'm truly worried about, I have no money to sign him with. We're going to trade Lorenzo Kane for Anthony Desclafani just to lower the payroll a bit. I'm realizing we have an insanely stacked outfield. We're going to trade Domingo Santana for Jack Flaherty. Flaherty plays well despite a low value. And we shed about a half million dollars in salary. And then I stopped recording because I gave up on the team. They had two of the worst years possible, but Vlad Jr., you can see, was absolutely tearing it up. And then we go 20 games over 500, literally the year after I almost gave up. We have Chad Green in the All-Star game. We also have Vlad Jr. and Austin Meadows in the All-Star game. So have three All-Stars, finished the year 102 and 60. So two years prior, we were 60 and 102. Now we're 102 and 60 in the playoffs. The Astros took a 1-0 lead in the series, but we win to tie it at 1, win again to take a 2-1 lead, and then we win the Series 3-1. Now against the Angels, we go up 1-0, and we'll win Game 2 and Game 3 to take a 3-0 lead. I went in the sim engine, we lost Game 4, and Chad Green is out 8 months. We get Trent Thornton back, but Green goes on the DL. So we make the World Series, but we're down 2-0 to the Rockies, we make it 2-2, we go down 3-2, and then game six, we lose four to three. So losing Chad Green, who despite being listed as a middle reliever, was our ace starter, really hurt in the playoffs. That's why we lost the World Series. We had a great year, manager of the year. We won 102 games and made it to the World Series. We're losing a couple of fringe depth pitchers. 
So we come back for year two, 24 and 14. Green is going to be out until about the All-Star break this year. Vlad Jr. just continuing to tear it up. Fernando Tatis Jr., not quite as good, but pretty solid still. In the draft, we got Sergio Gonzalez with our first pick. I showed that because he might be plug-and-playable. There's our lineup. Trammell and Morales are the only guys hitting below 300 besides, I think, Rizzo and Scope. The offense is doing its work. We go 102-60 and 60 again, but in the playoffs, we get swept by the Oakland Athletics. Morales and Tabor were on the DL, so a pitcher and one of our key starters. Still a tough ending to a great year. We're running into some financial problems. We're going to trade Austin Meadows for Michael Chavis, shed it. Eight to nine million dollars in salary. I'm trying to set up with this deal is trading Anthony Rizzo away. Then between Guerrero Jr. and Chavis, one place third, one place first. With the money from trading Rizzo, we'll be able to bring back Andrew Benintendi, who's only asking for about four million dollars a year, and we'll be able to bring back Chad Green, who's only asking for about eight million dollars a year. We got Benintendi signed for four point one million a year. We got him for four years. He's only asking for one year. The sim engine might have glitched and actually let me sign him. No matter. Kyle Freeland, it says our fans miss him, but we were 40 games into the season when we lost him to free agency. Vlad Jr. makes the all-star team again, along with Juan Soto. So while we lose a little bit of outfield depth, at this point, our outfielders we have are established. We finished a tough fifth place, only four games out of first. Cole Calhoun, who we got for Rizzo, retires. That's perfect. That's another ten or eleven million dollars off the books. Rizzo was originally eighteen million. Now with arbitration, we can't really afford any free agents. We just showed the best. We start this year off twenty-five and nine. Vlad Jr. through not quite seven years, averaging almost thirty homers a year, hitting over three hundred. You can see throughout the season we were in third place. 62 and 48. We finished the year tied for first, lose the one game playoff to the White Sox. Then we play the Royals in the wild card game. It says we didn't qualify for the playoffs. What that means is we lost our wild card game. So a great season, but we didn't end up good. You can see we had three bad years, then three out of the next four were good years. So six or seven years in, doing solid. There's our opening day lineup for 2024. We won the division at 86 and 76. Not as many wins, but we made it. We lost to the Reds in Game 6 of the World Series. And then in the offseason, we signed Bryce Harper to a one-year, $30 million deal. Because we had the money to spend, we extended Vlad Jr. for a discount. And then we're going to end the sim at the end of 2026. What did the team look like? Why am I ending it? Well, here's a list of players who are active free agents. I'm not going to be able to bring back nearly all of them. So I'm ending the sim here. We had Christian Yelich, who we got in as a free agent for cheap. I believe about $5 million a year. He played well. He now wants $11 million a year. Jose Mercado, who we traded for, I believe, Taylor Trammell to shed salary at one point. Great second baseman, now a free agent. Benintendi, a free agent. No longer settling for $4 million. Chad Green, now a free agent. He's washed up. Maybrees Villoria was our starting catcher. He's a free agent. Jason Hunter, former second-round pick of ours. That became our closer as a free agent. And Jose Morales, our center fielder, is a free agent. Matt Tabor, a solid starter, also hits free agency. So just a lot of players to try to bring back in more than we could. But we went 90 and 72 in 2026. We didn't win anything, but we had a great year. If we take a look at the history, 90 and 72, we didn't make the playoffs? No, we made the playoffs for sure, but we didn't go far in it. So you can see, year zero doesn't count. Our first two years, we go 60 and 102 and 64 and 98. I thought we were done. Then we go 102 and 60 back to back years. We have a really, really competitive fifth place finish. We get second. We got the wild card game, but technically didn't make the playoffs, I guess. 
and we go first place and make the playoffs two times. So in our six competitive years, we won the division four times. We were a wild card team a fifth time, and we had one off year where we had a deceptively good or bad, depending how you consider it, fifth place finish. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If you're new around here, subscribe for more mobile gaming content. I'll be focusing on baseball. Might mix other games in. If you guys liked this video, let me know what you liked about it. Let me know what you didn't like about it. Was it too long? Was it too short? Did I show too much of some things? Skip over other things? How was the length of the sim going eight or nine seasons deep? I said I was going to go 5-8, to eight, and I believe I went 9. I'm open to feedback on this. This is my first video on this game and of this variety, so I understand if it wasn't perfect. That's why I want your guys' feedback. But that being said, thanks everybody for tuning in. And until next time, and as always, peace out.